My mic stand just broke, so now I'm Elvis Presley. Today we're painting the new Justicia. Justica. Just. Just. Jaikita. Just. 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 Today we're painting up the new Judicia from the Indominus box set in a scheme that's perfect for pretty much any Legion. Welcome to Zorbazorp Gaming, my name's Lachlan Linton Keen, and today we're tackling the Judicia from the Indominus box set with a pretty simple colour scheme that's quite easy to achieve, that looks pretty fantastic on the tabletop, and is going to be perfect for your army no matter what Space Marine Legion you have. Up first we of course need to assemble him, so grab all of the Judicia parts off that massive command frame from the Indominus box set and get those assembled with plastic glue. I have actually built the torso completely without putting the head in later because I will be magnetising my my heads, which we'll have a look at at the end of the tutorial, and I've also kept the backpack and the left arm free from the model so we can paint those as sub-assemblies. To begin the paint job we of course need to prime, now I'm going to be using quite a few contrast paints as our base layers, so I'm going to be using the Wraithbone primer, and then I'm also going to bring in a bright white primer from Tamiya and do a very subtle zenithal prime just from the top of the model, which you can see there gives a nice subtle graduation which is really going to read on the cloth layers. Whenever we're working with contrast paints, they of course need to be our first layers to go down so that we don't have to worry about damaging the integrity of the prime. So I'm going to start with my darkest first, which is the Black Templar. Particularly useful because this is the armor element, so it is underneath the robes. So getting this done first means I won't accidentally paint over any of my robed areas later on. So I'm going to grab some Black Templar and apply that gently all over the model. And as always, when you're working with contrast paints, we want to work on a region at a time. Begin with the foot, then the leg, then move up to the knee pad, then move to the chest plate and make sure that you finish one area completely before moving on to the next so that you don't have any bizarre drying and weird separation of pigments as the contrast does all of its contrasty magic. We'll be picking out all of the armor plating that's exposed from underneath the robe as well as the pouches, the belt and the big holster on his left side. On our sub-assembly components, we're going to put a coat of black all over the backpack, but on the arm, there's actually very little of the black armor plate exposed because that trim on the pauldron and the pauldron itself is going to be specific to your chapter's colors. We're going to leave that blank for now. It's just a very thin sliver of armor plating that sits underneath the pauldron that's black, and then the rest of that arm is covered in a red robe. With the black done, it's time to move on to our next biggest contrast layer, which is the red fabric. And for that, we're going to be using the Flesh Terrors Red Contrast. This is one of my favorite contrasts. It's an absolutely stunning paint, but we need to be careful how we apply it because over big, broad surfaces, it can have a little bit of a weird pigment separation. So we're going to apply it to all of the cloth areas, the sash and the main robe itself, and make sure that you apply an even coat that isn't overly thick and do watch for it to be sinking down to the base of the model and over pooling. Now you want to be watching quickly because once it starts to congeal, you can't really move it around or you get a weird separation of pigment. So clearing and passing each section of the cloak as you go, making sure you're happy with the volume and then moving on to the next section of red. We're also going to apply this layer as our base coat for the gloves and the grip on the executioner blade, as well as any of the purity seals on the model. The third and final contrast layer to go down will be Skeleton Horde, another one of my favorites that applies really evenly and looks particularly good over Wraithbone. We're going to hit all of the parchment and scripture details on the model, so the purity seals, as well as the piece of scripture that wraps around his right arm, but there's also a section of armor plating just underneath his right breastplate that we're going to be highlighting with bone as well. It's nice to bring in a few little bone regions here and there. We've got a really quite dark dower model with the, the darker red and, and the black, and these little bone pops create some nice contrast. So with our blocks of color down, it's time to continue our base coating and we're going to move into the metallic range. Now there is a lot of details on this model. There is an obscene amount of skulls. And what I want to do here is create a palette of metallics that really brings those out so that they don't all kind of just fall apart and, and form a big block of uniform detail. So I'm going to be using three different metallic shades and I'm going to be building those up by having two different base coats. We're going to have a gold base and a silver base. Up first, we're going to grab Retributor armor to be our gold base, or we're going to pick out some really large key details. The big rim around his pauldron on the left shoulder, as well as the huge kind of accented armor plating detail on the top of his shin pad that is protruding out from beneath the robes, and we'll also hit the crossbar on his sword. 
The next layer that we're going to be using is lead belcher and it's important to throw these metallics into the wet palette so that we can draw them out and make sure that they're nice and thin going over these detail elements. And with my lead belcher, because it actually gets a little bit thick, I even brought in a little bit of Lamian medium to thin that down. So this is going to be our silver layer and the foundation for our bronze layer. So we're just going to apply this silver over every single detail that remains. All over the skulls, the little uh, dots and pins that go up and down the lining of the cloth. Uh, there's a lot of detail on the hourglass as well and of course all of the chain which hangs across some of the red fabric so make sure you use a nice fine tipped brush particularly on the chain because we don't want to slip and put any silver on our red fabric or black armor with that lead belcher down we've got the basis for our silver layers but we are going to be shading these down and we don't want them to go too dark so I'm going to bring in some storm host silver as a layer to really brighten up that steel and get some lovely crisp silvers into this paint job we're going to basically apply that all over the existing silver for Aries just to give it a lovely brightening pass. While we've got the Stormhost Silver out, I'm just going to grab a little bit of it, take it across the palette so that it's not too loaded on the brush, and then do some really subtle kind of overbrushed highlights on all of the gold areas. I don't want to do it too heavily that I lose the gold luster, but it just gives these a nice little kick, a nice little glimmer as they're being hit by the sun or whatever crazy planet this Judiciar is kicking ass on. So now we have our metallic foundations down, we're going to bring in our shades and really start to split these colours up. Now we've got the gold, which we'll deal with in a sec, but up first we're going to look at the silver. Anything we want classic silver, we're going to use null oil on. Now I kind of made a list essentially to define what specific details I wanted to be what colour, had a look at the geometry of the model and made sure that there wasn't too much silver next to too much other silver and kind of broke it up so that all the details really sing. For this model I decided to make the silver components the the big blade of the sword, all of the smaller chain details, and the various rivets that run up and down the cloak. Now we're going to bring in some Seraphim sepia and hit all of the other remaining silver parts, all of those skulls, and all of the details in and around the hourglass. This is a really fantastic colour combination, a brightened silver with that sepia going down over the top. It creates a, a nice kind of bronzy copper, it's just a lovely transitional colour, and set against a bigger gold and a bigger silver, it's just a really nice mid-tone that will make an overall metallic aesthetic really pop. Our final shade is of course the gold and we're going to bring in a much darker richer shade in Agrax Earthshade. Apply that nice and evenly across all of the gold elements and you'll see now that if they were silvering a little bit before with that mithril silver highlight, the Agrax Earthshade really crunches them up again and gets them into that lovely darker gold space which is really important for the metallic scheme to have the darker golden element. So now that those shades are done, our metallics are finished and it's time to start working on enhancing our colours. I'm going to begin with all of the bone details. We've got our parchments and scripture and of course that ribbed section of armour plating. And I'm going to do that using bone white from Vallejo or Ushabti bone if you're using the Citadel colours at home. And we're going to gently edge highlight all of these components. This is a nice thin paint that I'm taking off my palette so we keep the translucency and it will blend nicely over the skeleton horde contrast underneath, particularly on all of those parchment areas. And then I want to do quite a distinct highlight on the bone armor plating so that we keep the lovely goldeny browny bony color underneath from the skeleton horde in those various chest depressions. Now as this model was coming together I realized that there was no separation of color between the gloves and the red fabric and so I just wanted to make that a subtle transition. They are still both in the reds but I didn't want them to be the exact same tone so I just brought some null oil in and did a couple of passes over those gloves and the added benefit of this is it really added some extra definition around the fingers particularly on the hands that were gripping the chain and gripping the sword hilt. To furthermore break up our red scheme, I also wanted to create some difference between the red grip and the glove itself, which I'd now quite nicely darkened. So I went the other way and decided to brighten that grip, bringing in some bloody red and creating some lovely highlights, just picking out the individual banding on that handle to make those stark differences really shine between the brighter red handle and the darker red of the glove. So as I said before, I did actually decide to just leave the big red cloth layer. You could certainly do more to it. I had intended to do some wet blended highlights over the top of it, and maybe that's something we'll look at in a future video. I do love wet blending red, but I was just blown away with the application of the contrast, and I thought, hell, that's going to look good enough. So now it's time to work into our other big color layer, which is, of course, our black armor. Now, we're not going to leave this untouched because it needs a little bit of work. We're going to bring in a two-stage highlight of darker grays by mixing some abaddon black and 
just a lighter gray. I'm using the Stonewall gray from Vallejo here. Now the key here is you want a, a quite a neutral gray. You don't want a greeny gray or a blue gray. That'll accent the black quite nicely. And I'm gonna mix a bit of a gradient on my wet palette here so that I've got access to lighter and darker tones uh, as we move through the paint job. And then I'm just gonna come in with a nice fine tipped brush and just really carefully edge highlight all of the like really, really stern features of that armor around the rims of the backpack, the various angled plates of the armor overlapping one another and make sure you get a nice edge starting with quite a dark. I, I mixed what well, it was about probably 80 to 20 of black to gray. Uh, and then I came back with a second pass bringing more stonewall gray in and used a lighter gray. And as always with your edge highlighting, just picked a little bit less of those edges to give them that nice graduated accent. And it was subtle, it was really subtle, but the difference between the unhighlighted black and those extra highlights, it really pays off with Black Templar and you get some absolutely fantastic looking black armor. So this guy's really starting to come together now. We've got two big features left, which is the shoulder pauldron and the helmet. Now these are the regions that I would bring in the color relevant to your specific chapter. I think that's the place where you get to really show off that kind of heraldry and those color tones of your chapter armor. Because of course, most of chaplains in, in most armies are black. And we see this guy here on the Indominus box set has this lovely red robe, which is a kind of new color for the chaplaincy. And those colors are mostly constant through the chapters. So what we're gonna do is start off with our head. But what I want is I want a rather unique look for my guy. So I'm actually gonna magnetize the head by bringing in some small magnets. I'm just gonna fill that neck well uh, with, uh, with some super glue and then bring a single magnet in on my scalpel and then push it down into the hole uh, and let the super glue catch it and then pull my knife away and we'll have a magnet perfectly glued into the recess of the helmet well. And now I'm gonna grab the various heads that I want to use and just cut off any additional components that are for locking into these easy fit models. And then I'm just gonna grab my pin vise and drill out a hole into the base of that helmet so I can glue another magnet in there. And of course, the one thing to be careful of here is that you get your polarity right. So what I like to do is grab a stack of magnets and just sit it on top of the model, locking in place with the neck. And then I can come in with my hole, fill that with super glue and slide it on the top. And he'll look like uh, Inspector Gadget with a huge neck, but that way you know that the polarity is the right direction uh, and the helmet is going to uh, sit on the model and not be repelled because that would be a disaster. Once they're glued in, they're quite difficult to get out. So before we put down the bone colors on our helmets, we do have a few little details. There is some black rim around that kind of neck section, which I'm gonna pick out with black Templar, as well as some details that up wrap up around the back of the Crusader helmet. And then the traditional Judicia head also has a bit of a face plate or some cloth thing or something, uh, which is also black Templar. Uh, and then we've got a little bit of a silver banding that runs around the back of his skull that I hit with some lead belcher and null oil. And then it's on to our bone elements. I'm just gonna grab some more skeleton Horde here and gently apply this all over the models. There's lots of lovely kind of definition in the various uh, helmets and the, and the face structure. So make sure you get the contrast nice and evenly. It applies really nicely on small detailed regions like this. I'm also going to apply some of this contrast to the shoulder pauldron because of course I'm playing Blood Ravens. So I want that shoulder pauldron to be bone so I can put one of my Blood Raven transfers down there and then we'll have a really nice Blood Raven-y tie-in on this particular model. But this would be the time to paint that blue or purple or green or whatever the color of your legion. Once that skeleton horde is dry, I'm just gonna bring in some Terminator stone from the Citadel dry range and dry brush all over that model. Now I had a little interesting experience here because my Terminator's dry paint was actually dry. So I was having a little bit of difficulty picking up pigment. So in an effort to try and impart color of this lighter bone color onto the stone, I dry brushed my Crusader helmet quite vigorously. What that ended up doing was scratching away the skeleton horde and revealing a lot of the ray bone prime underneath and it looked absolutely awesome. It was like really nice weathering. So I did a little bit of that intentionally to kind of really rough up that tone and then mixed a little bit of water back into my paint so I could get more pigment application and then put the dry brush over the top. So now that Crusader helm has this really nice chunk out of the cheek where the paint has literally been scratched away and then I blended it back with the dry brush uh, and it just looks like a really nice piece of weather detailing. So sometimes your mistakes yield some really interesting results when you're painting. 
So with the main section of the helmets done, there's of course one section left on this model, and that is the eyes. Now, I initially tried the kind of classic Blood Raven eyes, bringing in some green. I used a Warpstone Glow layer, and then I brought in a, a Hex Wraith Flame Glaze to try and give a little bit of life to it. But the bright green with the bone just really wasn't working. So I ended up just going back to a nice darker red, which of course is tied in with the palette, and then just brought in a little highlight by adding in a little bit of gray to that red uh, to lighten it up and create just a lighter point uh, closer to the nose which helps make a focal point for those eyes and, and makes you feel like you're staring into the abyss, uh, the, the scary soul of the Judicia. God knows what this dude's seen. So with the eyes down that is all of our painting done and of course it's time to base this guy. We're going to chuck down some storm vermin fur all over the base, just a nice neutral grey and then I'm going to bring in some grim dark city rubble from the Geek Gaming Scenics range which is an amazing base ready mixture. It's a mix of soils and aggregates and grout and tints that just looks absolutely wicked straight out of the tub uh, and we're going to apply that using some uh, fast drying basing glue. Now what you want to do is apply this glue evenly all over the base and then let it sit for about 15 minutes until the edges start to go clear and you can tell it's getting a bit tacky. Then I'm going to bring down my marine and slot him into his hexagonal spot and just use a big chunk of slate uh, from the base ready mixture to cover up the spare hole and then what we're going to do is just dip that model straight down into the tub of base ready and that will all get locked in by the fast drying basing glue and we'll have a fantastic model ready to rock and roll. All of those materials are available uh, from my online store ZorpaZorp.com. It's an amazing set of basing products, the base ready range and I haven't got to try this grimdark rubble yet and it's it's got to be one of my favourites I think. Cannot wait to do the rest of my new 40k Indominus forces with it. It looks absolutely stunning. It's got little glints of like silver shards and granite through it so it kind of sparkles with the light here and there. It just looks really dynamic. Super happy with it. So once that basic material's all down, give the model a varnish and he's ready to take to the tabletop. And I have to say, I'm really stoked with not only this model, but this scheme. It was surprisingly easy and I think it looks really totally tabletop ready. I think it's a, a, a nice model. I like the blend of metallics, but of course, because of the way the chaplaincy coloring works, this color scheme is going to be perfect for pretty much any Legion. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Definitely let me know down in the comments below what other Indominus units you'd like to see, any thoughts you had, definitely like the video if you found it helpful. And make sure you do subscribe because we've got a whole lot of epic 9th edition 40k content on the way. Cannot wait to get this guy beheading some Necrons in our upcoming campaign. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time right here on Zorbazorb Gaming. Cheers guys.